So here you're still thinking that there might be some sort of issue from a neural standpoint. In this case, you might be thinking that the problem is coming more from an upper motor neuron problem or possibly a lower motor neuron problem. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at reflexes. Remember, with reflexes, if you're expecting an upper motor neuron issue, you're going to have hyperreflexia. If you're expecting a lower motor neuron issue, you're going to have hyporeflexia. So if we start off, uh, we'll start looking at the upper body, and we're just going to do the lower body here as well. Oftentimes, clinically, if I'm looking at one area and I start to see hyperreflexia or hyporeflexia, I'll very quickly extend one direction or the other to get a full picture of that person's reflexes, as opposed to just stopping in that area of um, concern that I'm looking at. So if I want to do my biceps testing, I'll let her arm rest, and then identify that biceps tendon. On some patients, you might ask them to bend their elbow a little bit just to get it pop. Bend your elbow for me. Bend. Pull this up. There you go. Good, that'll bring it on from there. I'm just going to press it, and then I'm just going to give her a little bit of a tap, of which you can see a little bit of a contraction that occurs, um, of which I'm also palpating. So that gives me my biceps. From there, I can go into my brachioradialis, which is a little bit more obvious on her. And then the last one that I'll look at is going to be triceps. Triceps is notoriously difficult for patients. Do me a favor, keep your head looking straight forward, though. It's notoriously difficult for patients. Um, to, to elicit, but I'll just do a little bit of pressure. If they've got the range of motion in their arm, you can let them hang in internal rotation, let that rest for me, and you'll do the same thing. Of which I'm not picking up one, which is not uncommon. Now from here, I would go ahead and continue my deep tendon reflexes if, again, I'm seeing a pattern of hyperreflexia or hyporeflexia. If I want to do my deep tendons down here, I would go ahead and start off with the um, patellar tendon. Good. And then I can look at the Achilles as well. I'll put a slight pressure on there, of which all of those come back as normal. If I um, need any further information, remember I can put her onto her stomach, and I can look at the hamstrings and do some uh, further reflex testing in that position. Now, if I see a hy uh, hyperreflexia, I can start to look a little bit more at named reflexes. The named reflexes, the predominant ones that we'll see in clinical practice, are going to be Hoffman's and Bitsky's. If I want to do Hoffman's, what I'll end up doing is I'll end up taking her hand and I'll rest it sideways, and I want to make sure that she has the thumb and finger relaxed. From here, I'm going to bring her middle finger into extension at the metacarpal phalangeal joint as well as the proximal uh, metacarpal phalangeal joint. From here, just let that relax for me. I'll give a little flick. And what I'm looking for is her thumb and her finger to do this motion in which they're moving towards each other. Now, if you think about this, I'm basically triggering what should be an extension uh, reflex. So if anything, a normal pattern would be a little bit of a wrist extension or the other fingers going extension. But because I have it in a shortened position, we're not getting that. In a positive, you end up, because of problems at the upper motor or spinal cord level, you end up having the opposite reflex kick. So if you look at all of our different named reflexes, that's typically what happens. You hit here, and the opposing muscle is what contracts. So that's what we see at the hand. When we look at the foot, um, foot-wise, we will do a Babinski, in which here, I'm going to straighten your leg all the way out, here, what you're trying to do is scrape from here all the way along the lateral aspect of the foot and then just come right across um, the ball of the foot. So let it down, and then I'll just do that motion one more time. Now, a normal is going to be a flexion. If they're positive, again, we're going to trigger the opposite response. So you'll see great toe go into extension, and then the other toes will either fan out or they'll curl a little bit. So. Great toe extension, yet I'm doing things on the flexor side of the foot, of which she's a little sensitive on that. The last one that I can do that's um, not necessarily a named one, but still relatively easy to get into, is I can take the ankle, grab onto it, and have a nice firm pressure, and then very quickly give her a movement into dorsiflexion. And I'm, what I'm looking for is clonus, which is going to be some beats going back into that plantar flex position. In this case, a positive is going to be three beats or more uh, for that test. 
The final reflex that we'll look at uh, that comes to us by way of uh, article by Chad Cook is going to be the inverted supinator reflex. In this case, what you're doing is you're letting the elbow bend. You're going to go back and you're going to do the same movement uh, or say, um, same tap on that brachial radialis close to that stoiloid process. And for a positive on this, you're going to end up seeing finger flexion or they'll go into a extended position at the um, elbow. So a little bit of a pop, of which I'm seeing a little bit of wrist extension, and then I'm also not seeing any um, elbow uh, extension, which tells us that we have a normal test there. So that is going to be your basic um, hyperreflexia as well as hyporeflexia exam with the named ones clonus and the supraspinatus or the inverted super, um, the inverted supinator test being for uh, those who have hyperreflexia.